everybody, it's the program. Hi, Bird. Hey, hey, Kenny. We're on TV. I know. I'm I'm so happy. Yeah. What happens here on the program? Turn on the machines. Then we start talking. We talk for one hour. And that's the show. It's Friday. You guys having a good time on Friday night? Uh, they probably we eat a lot of partiers and drunk people all night at 11.30 on Friday night. Hi, partiers. Party time. So, I hope all your partying has been fun, partiers. Yeah. This is your third, is your third appearance or second appearance on the show here? This is my second appearance in the studio. Second time in the studio. When was the last time you were here? I think it was in June, maybe. June, wow. Maybe. Um, that long ago? Yeah, it was when it was with Lewis. Yeah. <clears throat> I think Lewis is um, visiting his folks right now. Yeah, he's in Minneapolis. But we talked to him a little bit. I think he left us a message today. How have oh, you sweet. been doing? Anything um, happening since the last time you were on? Um, yeah, lots of stuff. I was, um, I had a job over the summer, which is good. Always, I feel good when I have a job. What was your job? I was painting houses. Oh. And, um, I like the guy, um, who owns the company I was working with. And, uh, so that was good. His name's Jeff. And Breathe Easy House Painters. Thanks, and Jeff. Jeff. Yo, Jeff. You rock. So, um, so that was good, and and hopefully we'll find some more jobs. Did you get out of that house? I, remember, I, remember the, I think his name is Bruce. Yep. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not living with Bruce anymore. I love you, Bruce, and uh, and I hope it's all going well at the house. Is he still there? I think so. He, I talked to him a few days ago, and he said he was thinking about moving out of there. Um, I'm guessing that I still have mail going there. I forwarded my address, but since I started going by Bird, that it has really confused the mail people. And so, like, I get mail delivered to Robert Whitlock, to Robert F. W. Whitlock, to Rob Whitlock, and to Bird Whitlock. And so it's really confusing, and, and they seem to have a hard time figuring out what's going on. How long have you been bird? Um, maybe two or three years. Good. I started doing that. This is a really good sandwich I'm eating. What's on the sandwich? It is cheese with a pesto spread. Pesto sandwich. Uh-huh. All right. Hey, do you know the um, people who do... Uh, what is it? The, the Olympia Justice and Peace something? Olympia yeah. Movement for Justice and yeah. Peace. Yeah, you know those people? Yeah, I do. Are you involved with that? Or? Um, not super involved right now. I, w I was hoping to be, um, but I just got too busy over the summer. They, um, they have a, I have been involved more in the past, and they have a big event coming up at the end of the month. Yeah, they invited us to the event. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so it's the People's Movement Assembly. It's um, something that the people who organize the U.S. Social Forum have developed, and it's this place where people can gather and share information and meet each other and network around issues of social justice. Sounds like the internet. I mean, we'll see. It's going to be real life, though. That'd be fun. So it's an Olympia, but then people are meeting, and then we're going to meet up and talk about peace or something, I guess. We're going to go to the thing. Uh, you see all those, you, you like those protesters and stuff? You know, I always see those protesters on the street that say they want peace. And I always think, what are they going to do? Like, what are, why do they have these signs out there? Like, everybody likes peace. Nobody's like, against peace, you know? And then yeah. there's signs out there, and like, they're like, I want peace. And it's like, yeah, okay, the signs, and I don't know how much protesting does, but... You have a good point there. Yeah. Yeah, I do a, a peace vigil every week, and sometimes I hold signs that say, choose peace, 
Yeah. So I'm definitely like one of those people. I could we could have a good conversation about that probably. Where do you do your visual? Um, it's at the Percival Landing. Where's Where's that Percival Landing? Percival Landing is in downtown Olympia. It's a big park, and is that where everybody else does it too? It's like on the bri- like by B or by Ralph's there or Bayview or whatever. Like on the bridge, kind of. It's um, further east than the bridge. It's kind of across from Heritage Park Fountain mm-hmm. and Heritage Fountain Park. And you just stand there and hold the sign that says "Choose Peace." Yeah, some of the signs like there's a lot of different signs. Um, yeah. Glenn Anderson, who ha- is an organizer with the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation. Is oh, and the the guy, that guy's got the chin beard, right? Yep. No yeah, mustache, he, chin beard guy? Yeah, he, ha- he has a show. The Ole FOR has a show on TCTV. Yeah, you watch that show? I've watched it a couple times. Yep, yep. I like the guy's beard. Yeah, you should have him on the show sometime. Would he come on this show? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. yeah. I see, I mean, I kind of know him because, you know, and he kind of is a little bit weird to me. I mean, he's, he's come, to, uh, yeah, I, I don't have him talking that many times, but... Maybe it's maybe it's I like his beard, but it also makes me maybe not want to talk to him. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, so you do the signs. I've been talking about this. And I, I don't think the signs do anything. You know, everybody wants to choose peace. Of course, choose peace. Like I, this is what I've been saying the past couple of days. I've been kind of waiting for you. Is that holding a sign that says choose peace is like holding a sign that says like don't kill people or something. You know, I mean, yeah. it's like, these are like kind of regular things. You know, people people are like, of course. Of course, everybody wants to choose peace. Everybody wants violence and stuff. But I mean, just the science is choose peace. Everybody wants to choose peace. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think everyone wants to choose peace, and and you know, I think everyone who comes to the peace vigil does so for different reasons and probably has different ideas about what what they're trying to do or accomplish and who they're trying to. Um, you know, effect or influence, and I do stuff like I will, I um, I do photography and video at the Peace Vigil, and there's a band that comes to play. They're called the Artesian Rumble Orchestra, and I'll get audio from them, and I'll put it into a little, you know, thing, and upload it to YouTube. And sometimes I'll I'll post that on the White House Facebook page, and I'll talk about my belief that the foreign policy of the USA is imperialistic and I'll you know try to influence people that way and and agitate uh, for changes in the way the that our country tis of the United States of America treats people and treats the world and so I guess that's that's how I approach it and and the other way I approach it is that I want to um, share some happiness with people and like and see people when they come by and wish them well and hope you know try to transmit positive regards to them and say hey I you know I see you you're a valuable human being you know you're a sufficient creature and I want you to be happy, and I want you to feel good. <coughs> oh, Mike. oh, there it goes. You can get a sign that just says, uh, s- like, just like a smile, or like, stay happy, everybody. You know, that's a good sign, too, to kind of keep positive morals going. Because some, some people don't like the, I mean, I the choose peace sign, they, they think it's a, a, a negative statement almost, you know, because ag- you're against something, which is the war, which is something to be against. But oh, man. Oh man, I'm totally on board. We we had a steering committee this week meeting and we talked about the vigil signs and some people want some changes in the vigil signs and so <laughs> we're working on that right now. I think I'm actually going to post a solicitation on our Facebook page for people to send in ideas. Yeah. Um, we you guys can send some ideas too here to call the number and we'll, send it, we'll, we'll give them back to Bird too if you have ideas for what you want to see on signs. That would be great, yeah. I, I watch YDH, um, YDH, WM on TV and, well, actually on YouTube, on the internet, but, yeah. so, um, <coughs> yeah, YouTube. All right, let's check this first message. It's from your friend, Lewis. 
Hey, you die out with me. I smoke up. It's I'm probably gonna have breakfast soon. Just like you said, um, we doing the late program there. Seems like you were. I was actually, yesterday. I probably just got to sleep when you called me. In my time, it was 2.20 a.m. Anyways, she called me back. Check in with it. We're going to call Lewis back. All right, bye. Hey, Lewis. Lewis, I'm calling you right now. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. I'm baking cookies with my mom. Aw, hi, Mom. What kind of cookies? Uh, now she has a bunch of basil. And there's a whole. <laughs> How's the weather out there in Minneapolis? Uh, it's pretty nice, actually. It was like summer weather for a while. Now it's kind of starting to be um, cold air. It's not like as cold as it can get here. But. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, hi, hi. mom on the phone. Yeah. Wait, uh, who's, who's Does your mom want to talk to us? It's Bird. It's Bird, Bird Lewis. Hey, Lewis, it's your former roommate. Oh, Bird. Hey. Okay. Hey. Yeah. You want to talk to my mom? <laughs> yeah, we want to. We want to know more about cookies. I've talked to Lewis as well. Okay, well, oh. actually, I was I was making all the dough for the cookies. I was just going off an instruction sheet. But what what kind of cookie, kinda, What kind of cookies are they? I just seemed a little hesitant to just get on the phone. Oh, she what? laughed and kind of hunched up a little bit, and then went <laughs> and did something else. Okay. That's okay. What kind of cookies are you making? Uh, they're apple chocolate chip. Wow. Hey, Lewis, when are you coming oh. back to town? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. By the end of the month, I don't know. I, I, I hopefully will be there for the 29th, but actually, so I was talking to this person yesterday, and they might want to come to Washington with me, but she has a commitment Ooh. on the 28th. Yeah. We probably wouldn't have to, we would be able to leave. You want me to adjust that camera? Oh, oh yeah, you can do that. Okay. This one. You, oh, you, so you might not be back till the 20, or uh, till the, till after the 29th. Uh, it's a possibility. I guess all my plans are up in the air, but it's a possibility that I won't be back till after then. But I know you called me and you said it's going to be at the, the Senior Center, you said? Yeah, it's at the well, it's at the Olympia Center, which is kind of like the community center, but mostly the senior center. Okay. Yeah, that's um, good. Yep. Yeah. What, what time of day is that gonna be at? I'm not sure. Yeah. What time? What time is it? it's gonna be in? The, just like in the daytime, sometime, right? Probably in the morning to the. I would say till. <coughs> probably from like nine to five, probably right. Yeah, my understanding is that it, the doors are gonna open at eight thirty, and there's going to be you know coffee and stuff to eat. So is there a larger event that's happening that day? Yeah, it's the People's Movement Assembly. Oh, wow. It's like they, they're, they're, uh, for just, they want justice and peace. Yeah, and fa <laughs> fairness. For everybody. Um, I mean, every, uh, <laughs> every time I hear the, the, the phrase justice and fairness for everybody, it's always... Uh, it's, it is, it is, it's funny because... We want... Uh, like <laughs> we want everybody to be to have justice and to be fair to each other. Yeah. Yeah, I'm for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> I would say that we want people in, who control multinational corporations and the systems that support multinational corporations and like Wall Street financiers to we want those people to stop beating up on everyone else and stop polluting the planet and endangering the well-being of future generations. Yeah. That's, that's how I would...
talk about fairness and justice. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good thing to want. I guess. Well, Lewis, what will we come back? And you see anything exciting in Minneapolis? Uh, yeah, I went. I went to the show. I saw uh, Mount Banana, the band. Um, I saw Pat. Oh yeah. I've seen Pat a couple times. He actually he said his was like, "Oh, sorry, I didn't get to you on the TV show, but I just had other plans." I also, I also realized that Pat could be the could be the third triangle in the in a Rick triangle. Oh yeah, he could so be Rick also. Patrick. Patrick and Derek too, yeah. So he could be like the black sheep and Kenrick and Frederick and Patrick. Yeah. Also Derek, you know Derek? I was looking at his name. He's. Oh yeah, Derek Kane. Yeah. Except, well, he, but he spelled it D E R E K. Oh, okay, never mind then. Patrick then. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. he could be, Patrick could be Rick I also. We're all. Yeah, I think Freddie spelled it for be Rick for the program, but I, I don't think that's how it's there. Oh, it's a misspelling. He, he just, he's just placing his own spelling onto him. Yep. He just, he just wants to recruit for the, the army of Rick. Yeah. So was was Pat unhappy about having his commercial on there, or he didn't notice after that one time he complained? Uh, I never really talked to him about it again. I don't even really know if he like. I I don't think he gave it too much thought. He wasn't aware, yeah. He's a pretty like. Yeah, you know, I don't want to say happy go lucky, but he's like. He lives the moment. That's good. I would say most of the time. Well. Lewis, we, uh, we're, we're missing you on the program. Come back for Saturday, one of these Saturdays, maybe next month. Okay, yeah, oh, wait, also, so I might be coming with this person, and I was telling her that I might have to try to come for Saturday. And she was like, can I be on this show? And I was like, yeah, you should. So if she comes, I might, she might not, I think it would be funny if we got there and like immediately the first thing we did was go on the program. <laughs> Well, we, we could try to plan it out. If you just call us back uh, within the, in, in the next couple of weeks, and we'll figure out when you're going to come back, and uh, we'll work it out. Okay, okay. we call, call you from the road. Yeah. Because I know it took me like two and a half days to drive here, but it might take less time to get two drivers. We don't have to take as many breaks. Yeah, you should uh, yeah stop off uh, somewhere. We'll call the place that you're at, and then you can watch them answer the phone. Oh uh, yeah. How was your drive? What? How was it was pretty good. It was like, I just kind of listened to music the whole time and I slept in my trunk. So I just was like really trying to go and not really see anything, which I guess I did. Although I, I know, I was like actually funny because my, my sister came to visit my parents at the same time and then I picked her up and I, I hadn't been listening to the radio. So I was like, during the time that I was driving was the time that Steve Jobs died, so I didn't hear about it until I picked my sister up from the airport. And it's just like, mm. did you hear about Steve Jobs? And I was like, no, did he die? She was like, yep. Yeah, that was what I thought. That was kind of sneaky. I didn't, I didn't even know that he was sick, but he had cancer for years. Yeah, I think they made an announcement like a year ago or something, or like when he stopped being the CEO of Apple. Yeah. I think it like wasn't widely known that he had cancer until pretty recently. I'm worried about my computer now that he's dead. I think it's gonna die. Huh. Like Steve Jobs kept my computer alive. So yeah, it has like a self-destruct device implanted in him. You have a you have a Mac. You using the Mac computers? Yeah, I, I don't know. I've actually, I've never used a Mac computer. I really don't even own that many Apple products. I never had like an iPod or anything. I don't know if Bird has that. Seems like a lot. I have an uh, iBook, I think. Mm. A MacBook. MacBooks. Mm. Excuse me. I just burped. Well, okay, Lewis, we'll, so we'll talk to you later, I guess. All right, talk to you later. Thanks, bye-bye. Uh, uh oh, it's a commercial. Yay, commercials. Limpy a dream phone. Call the number. What's your dream?
What's gonna happen if you do that? You leave a um, leave a message, and then it. Uh, I'm gonna turn. I wanna turn up the stereo a little bit. Uh, turn it up. You leave a message, and then uh, then then I don't know really. No, we should. We could find out. We could call Freddy about it. He knows more about it than. Oh, he knows a little bit more than we do about it. So we'll ask okay. him. Um. Oh. Hmm. So here, let's call. Let's call Freddy. Ask him about the dream phone. Or we should <coughs> check the rest of the messages first. Like, do they grant your dreams to come true if you call? I think. I think they're just trying to do some kind of like shared dreaming. Uh, maybe, ma like magic dream stuff. Like an art project. Yeah. That's cool. Where they're like recording everybody's dreams and then <laughs> looking for similarities or making, something. Making a spreadsheet. Yeah. We'll see what happens with that. I don't even know if it's if it's if it's successful because we can't talk to anybody. I tried calling the dream number, but then there's a message, which is what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I I can never remember my dreams anyway. Yeah. I always think I can. They wake up and you're like, well, that was a crazy dream. What even happened, though? You don't remember. Hi, you've reached Freddy Dobler. Oh. I can't come to the phone right now because I left my... I wonder if it, is his phone still in Seattle? I don't know. Maybe he just hasn't updated his voicemail. Hi, you've reached Freddy Dobler. I can't come to the phone right now because I left my phone in Seattle and it's probably dead. And um, But you can try to reach me at my Google Voice number. That's 440-847-9277. And um, yeah, I can still pick up and answer the phone from that number. And also you can text me there and I'll get it. Um, well, so yeah, we'll just try 440-847-9277 or 440-VHS-WARP. Thanks. Hey, Freddy. VHS-WARP. VHS-WARP. Where are you? Uh, it's it's the program. You're supposed to be showing up here, but uh, or not supposed to be. You're supposed to be answering the phone, I guess. But you're not doing that, so we'll find you somehow, maybe in the future. You have about Freddy, we want to talk to you. You have about half an hour if you want to call us back. We want to talk to you, Freddy. So, uh, yeah, all right, bye-bye. Yeah, we just got this lamp. This is the second day when we have this lamp. So, see all these light? This is light effects, so we do the chroma key thing, so when we do the lamp, it moves that around the... really cool. It's moving around the effects. Yeah, I think you should... Well... If I was in charge, I'd give you an award, Kenny. You can, yeah, who's going to give me the awards, though, for, like, best talk show or just... For, like, yeah, going out and doing it and, you know, you have a TV show. The doing it awards. Yeah. That's the partici like, it's like participation awards, kind of. I think it's really cool. I like watching your show and... That's good. Yeah. Yeah, you guys could, if you guys like to watch the show, too, you can be on the show. Just like Bird. Hey Kenny, it's uh, it's Reva. Give me a call back. Talk about rescheduling. See you later. Bye. All right. This feels good to burp. Oh, uh, okay. Did you know that birds can't burp? Birds can't burp. Ah, uh, this bird can burp. ...to an automatic voice message system. Aviva Siegel. Hey, Aviva. It's the program. 
So I'm looking at the schedule. If you're leaving on the 19th, you're scheduled for the 18th at 2 p.m., so maybe you can still show up to that. Uh, I guess give us a call back. You have about half an hour calls back. Thanks. Yeah, that's why you can't give, uh, you give, like, uh, seagulls alkyl seltzers. It's, it's real evil to do, I guess, right? Yeah, but it explodes their stomachs. Yeah, that's what, that's like a, a prank or something. I don't know what it is, a game. An evil prank. Yeah. So they, you give it to them, and the one they just, like, they're just, like, looking fine. They, they, I don't know if they blood out of their mouths or something, or if they just kind of fall over. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I don't even know. News. I don't even know why I know about that. It's kind of freaky. Yeah. Well, people have probably done it. Yeah. Which is really sad. People shouldn't hurt animals for no reason. Yeah. How come a, how come birds can't burp? Good question. I do not know. I don't know about that. Oh yeah, what we'll to ask somebody else here? This is a message Why? from you. What Why? did you say to us? Yeah. Why do cows Program. This is Bird, and it is approximately <laughs> 15 minutes until 2 p.m. <laughs> And I'm supposed to be there at 2 p.m. And I'm calling to say that I'm going to be late in case I'm not there right at 2 p.m. That I am on my way. Oh, good. Awesome. Yes. Yay. See you soon. All right. Yeah, see you soon. <laughs> go. Now he's here. Now you're seeing me. You made it. Well, that's uh, all the messages. That's really great. I One thing I want to know is, what's the longest period of silence that you've just sat here on the couch while the program is running? I'm not suggesting that would be a good idea. Yeah. I think that would be boring to watch, but like, it'd also be kind of cool. Like Maybe just have one episode where you just sit there and do nothing. Yeah. Um, well, the show started off as a radio show. So, uh, you know, when you're on the radio, if you're not talking, then, uh, then there's nothing happening at all. Yeah. So that's what the show is from. So when we're not talking, it's a nothing show. That's what I was saying. It's not a nothing show. It's a talk show. So if, yeah, uh, yeah probably the longest time we ever had is like maybe if I, uh, like this, where I'm, I'm not sure what to say next, so I'm taking some pauses. Totally. Between what I'm saying, but it was on the radio. So on the radio, yeah, like like if you you know you're listening to the radio, and then uh, you know people stop talking. Like here, if we stop talking, look, see, we're doing video stuff. Yeah, see, we can you can watch us move around and stuff. But we started out on the radio, so uh, yeah, if we were on the radio, then you can't see all this stuff, and then it would be a video show. So <coughs> that's why that's why we consistently talk the whole time, and that's what it was going to be. I did have an idea. A long time ago of, of doing a show where I said nothing, I just sat here every day for an hour, but that would get old, I guess. And it's not that much farther from that anyway. I mean, I mean kind of, but maybe we're talking, so we could do nothing for a long time. But that would get that would get boring for everybody, maybe. But that's why we're a talk show, not a nothing show. Some people might like it, though. Some people might be like, I'm going to tune into YDHWM and just watch, and I want to see nothing. Yeah. I want nothing. And I just want people to be quiet and sit there. Yeah, it would be like a like a meditation hour though. I don't even do that in my life though. I mean, I'm always listening to music or watching TV or, or something, you know. Making TV. Yeah, making TV, watching TV, talking to somebody else, you know, doing an activity. Yeah. Uh, even, I, I mean, if, if sleep counts as an activity, then I'm pretty much doing stuff every, all the time. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I've I guess... I've been following the Occupy Wall Street a lot. But yeah? But I don't want to... But you were going to say something. Uh, I was just talking about how it, it were... Yeah, sleeping. <laughs> everybody's doing stuff all the time. So you're always doing... Everybody's always doing something, unless you're, like, meditating or something. But that's kind of meditating. Meditating oh. is something. Yeah. Halfway through the program, everybody. Welcome to Saturday. Yay! Saturday. So yeah, you're yeah you're in, you're into Occupy Wall Street. We called you on the phone about that the other day. Yeah, I've been following it and I've been you know talking with a lot of people about it and looking forward to it. I picked up some recycling bins from the county today to have at the park during the occupation, so that we're making sure not to 
you know, fill up the landfill with things that can be recycled and reducing our, you know, oh, yeah. use of resources. And I saw a funny picture where it showed everybody <laughs> and they're you know, drinking Coca-Cola and wearing Nikes and uh, on their iPhones and stuff in this protest against corporations. Yeah. So that is funny. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't control everybody, I guess. So there's going to be a local Occupy, well, what are you calling it? Lo Occupy Olympia? Or are you just call calling it Walk Occupy Wall Street Olympia or something? Yeah. It, it. By the time this program airs, it will have started a week ago. Uh huh. Um, on the 15th. T oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Saturday. Yeah. And, uh, and so. It's a lot of people are working really hard on it. There are a lot of really great ideas. And so hopefully by this time um, next week, it'll be the 22nd. It will still be going. There will still be a lot of people in the park. And Sylvester Park? Sylvester Park, downtown Olympia. And talking about, you know, what, what needs changing. So what's going to happen? People are just going to go stand in the park. There's going to be some standing in the park. There's going to be some talking in the park. There's going to be hopefully lots of people doing both of those. And, um, and you know, geez, I, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I think it's going to be fun. And I think there's a lot of opportunities for people to... Uh, build coalitions and alliances and uh, realize that um, you know the way I like to look at it is solidarity building coalition building and creating a space that is truly safe for everyone and where everyone can be happy and that includes even current members of the 1% who are willing to listen and respect the lives of everyone else. How, so how rich do you have to be to be in the 1%? Um, that's a good question. I'm, I don't, I, you know, my, I don't know exactly, but my guess is around like a $400,000 a year income. It might be a little lower than that. It might be a little higher. But generally, people who make around four hundred thousand dollars a year. Only one percent make four hundred more than four hundred thousand. I think so. It seems I'm that seems. Sure. I mean, that seems kind of low. It might be. Yeah. I was thinking to be a millionaire. A couple. We have to be. I thought. I thought even like one mil a millionaire wouldn't be in the one percent. You know, maybe in the, like the five, two percent or something. I think we have to be a multi-millionaire to be in the one percent, right? I think Dan Bennett might know the answer to this question. Yeah. Call him. Ask him about them. Yeah. What? How far? Yeah. So. Is it going to be a 24-hour thing in the park there? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah. That people are bringing tents and tarps and. So they're going to sleep in the park. Yes, that. Well, I haven't decided whether I'm going to sleep in the park. But some people are. Some people are planning to do that. Hopefully, a lot. And yeah, are you gonna? Uh, I I'm not going to sleep there for sure. I'm but I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, I like to stand in that park anyway. So maybe. I'm gonna go stand there again, but it's not. I, I mean, hope you go. Maybe I'll bring the pro I can bring the program out there. That would be the best if you could bring the program out there. Yeah, sure. Do some interviews with people. Maybe if you guys can get the gazebo, if you guys, <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to rent that thing out, but you guys are just gonna go there. I mean, is it is illegal, right? Or yeah, but uh, I think we we might be able to get a permit for the gazebo. They're free. You don't have to pay anything. You just have to talk to the person. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you're gonna so. get a permit for the gazebo, but you're not supposed to be there at night in the park. That's true. So I would recommend that you don't have your, your recording equipment there in the park at night unless you feel safe enough getting it out before you are apprehended in the case that that might happen. I'm going to go. Well, I would go there during the day. I'm not going to do the nighttime things. And I, 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 I think, I mean, you can use, I think standing in a park, that's fine, I guess. And I guess I don't even know why standing in the park at night is illegal. But yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Lots of people, I think lots of people are doing that anyway, like uh, maybe street kids and ho like hobos, you know, they're doing, the, they're like, they're already occupying, maybe they're, they have a political agenda that we don't know about. It's possible.
So uh, you, you're gonna try to? How come you guys don't want to occupy like the capital? Maybe uh, or? Yeah, I think there's a lot of. I, well, I mean things might change, you mm -hmm. know, and the occupation might move. Uh, it depends what happens. There's a special session for the legislature. Um, unusually, this year it's starting a month early. On November 28th, the legislature, state legislature, is going to meet and um, <clears throat> here in Olympia. And so some people are talking about having a big event to welcome the legislature back to Olympia. And uh, I think so. Hopefully, the occupation movement will be going strong at that point, and um, there will be, uh, you know, opportunities to affect policy through the the movement in that way at that time. Yeah. So I don't know about yeah. Stand, like stand, standing in the park, sleeping in the park, like that's gonna that's gonna change corporations or something because it's not even the government like I think the people the thing that everybody is mad about is not even a government problem and it's is it like the corporations problem yeah th and you can't you, can, I don't, you can't change the corporations through protesting they don't care at all they just watch you and then they just laugh at you or something from the from the rooftops or something right yeah it's true um, the 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 real problem I think that we have is that the corporations have control over the government uh, so that the government doesn't do its job to protect the people against the corporations. So instead of protecting people against the corporations, the government is actually helping the corporations to do what they do, which is really hurting a lot of people. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's exciting stuff. So, when, so you're gonna you're gonna start going that. That's gonna be tomorrow at the park, right? Or I mean, tomorrow in our time. And how long do you think that's gonna go for? I have no indefinitely? idea. Indefinitely. That I would be happy if it was indefinite and that it went as long as it takes to get the kind of changes that we need. So, what's going on in New York? Are people sleep? Are they on the streets? Are they in in parks also? So I've been getting some news recently that the mayor of New York, uh, Mr. Bloomberg, is um, going to, well, has announced that the park must be vacated by 7 p.m. tonight. Ooh. So actually, it would be great to call New York right now because they're three hours ahead of us. Um, you know anybody that's doing the protests? I don't know anybody in New York. Okay, I've been calling McDonald's and stuff and asking them about it, but they don't want to answer my questions. They're just hanging up. Yeah. I called McDonald's in, in Times Square or something, and they said, say, is the protest I do, happening? I do know a couple people in New York. Um, do you have their phone numbers? Uh, no. I'm trying to think of who might have them that I know. I could, let me call someone right now. So if you get that gazebo, if you guys do get the gazebo, you can tell me about it, right? And then we can shoot the show from the gazebo. Totally. Um, yeah. The, the gazebo will be available on Saturday, I'm pretty sure. So that would be a good time to, to be there. If, uh, if I want to make the... This is Bird. Oh, uh, Bird's on the personal phone call. A, a telephone number for Jack Smith. He's trying to find somebody who's in the, in the protest thing. I want to say, uh, you know, I'm doing all this. This, I guess, I'm gonna. We're gonna go to these rallies. I don't necessarily affiliate with a political party, so if if anybody, if anybody out there, uh, yeah. Oh. Great, thank you, Glenn. Okay, bye. If anybody out there on TV Land, if you guys are, uh, you know, uh, conservatives or you don't like these uh, these protests and you want me to go to your conservative rally, I'll do that also. Because uh, I don't want to, yeah, get affiliated with one side or the other. So if you guys think that the, the all these protests and they're bad and stuff, you guys can call in. Uh, I think most most of the time. Oh, it's not on the commercial break. I'll, yeah. <laughs> We act like it's not true, but it is. You, you start to realize it becomes harder and harder to function. YDHWM. YDHWM.
watching HWM every 9th, 11, 30 p.m. If you guys are out there, if you guys are conservatives or like radicals, or I also want to find some like racists. If you think you're a racist, call the number, please, uh, or anything like that. So any, anybody else can call the number, and then you can, because uh, right now the show is becoming like uh, pe people, the peace people. They're tr they're trying harder to call us. Maybe they're into into the TV more or something, or into public access more, but. I want to hear from the from the people who don't like these conserv or I mean the the protesters too because I haven't heard too much from you guys because these other people they're a lot more vocal you know they're doing these protests and all those other things so maybe the maybe the the conservatives are kind of quiet and they stay home but that's kind of their their way but you guys should call the program anyway yeah yeah if you're racist call the program and talk to Kenny <laughs> yeah if you're conservative <laughs> yeah or if you think you're not racist um, but you might be. Yeah. You should call in. Or if your spouse, if you if you suspect your spouse of infidelity. Or if you've seen something that seems racist, you should call and talk about it too. We'll hear about it. Yeah. Uh, so did you find you're gonna find somebody in New York or? Yeah, I, I have Jack's number programmed into my phone. Let me call it right now. I don't know if it's a cell phone number. Okay. Okay. So you might not want to. Do you want to call? Yeah. Is that okay? We can call him from the show number, or you think he might not want to be on I TV? A, I got a voicemail. Oh. Uh, um, I'm gonna leave a message. Okay, here. leave a message for wh what's a, so this guy is in the protest though. He's like in in the park right now. Or yeah, he's he's in New York. Hey Jack, this is Bird calling from Olympia, Washington, and I just wanna uh, ask if you're still in New York and uh, how the protest is going. I heard there's a big crackdown tonight at at 7 p.m. It's 3 p.m. in Olympia, so. I'm guessing it's about 6 p.m. in New York. So I hope all is well and solidarity. So that's happening pretty soon, and they're going to get kicked out of the park potentially. Yeah, that's what they're saying. So, uh, but they don't, they don't want to get kicked out. Nope. So gonna, are they, they going to do like a sit a sit in or whatever? I probably. I I don't really know. They're you know talking about going off and doing flash mobs at different intersections around town so like little groups would break off and go to different places and then maybe the whole big group would find a place to regroup yeah so i i'm not sure it's really uh inspiring the union workers who are working on the new new construction over at the old ground zero location which is i don't know if you've been to uh lower manhattan but the area where they are is right near where the World Trade Centers were, right near Ground Zero. And so a lot of the construction workers who are working on Ground Zero are coming over and hanging out at the protest and talking with everyone, uh, having lunch with the protesters. There's lots of food that has been donated. And so there's people are just eating food and talking and sharing stories and getting to know each other. And it's pretty amazing. That sounds like a good uh, good time, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna go out, go out there one of these days to see this protest. I didn't know it was happening so soon. Uh, so how many so how many people do you think are gonna beat this Olympia thing? Are there gonna be a lot of people or? Um, hard to know, tell, huh? Hard to tell, but yeah. I have heard a lot of people talking about it, and people that I haven't heard talking in the sort of more established uh, peace and justice movement here in town. So there's, I think that this movement is resonating with a really much larger section of the population than traditional um, activism efforts have been able to reach. So I think one thing in, in Olympia with all the with all the evergreen students, people take things kind of too far sometimes. Uh, we get a lot of people from like around the country who are kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe crazy in my opinion, and then they come out here and then they want to be extra, uh, extra, extra like, uh, 
protesty or whatever, and then they do like far stuff that's farther. I remember like there are people who, like broke bank windows and stuff. So I think people, lots of people in in who are from here think you know that we get all the crazies from around the country, and then they come here and they start messing things up. Even though we get that a lot, you know, like uh, like we're used to that and we see all these protests and stuff and people are coming from maybe the south or like other places where there's not so many people that are just like listening to them and they come out here and keep protesting and they're like oh well, we're seeing you guys there every students again and they come in new in a town what do you think about that you think people are going to do that um i think there's a l there are a lot of people like you who are concerned about that kind of stuff happening and I also think there's a lot of people who are being proactive and having conversations about that right now. And that's one of the things that's been really um, heartening to me <clears throat> is that I've seen a lot of people saying, you know, you cannot do stuff, you know, you can't, don't be, you know, anyway, I, I have a lot of feelings about this, but I've seen a lot of conversations about it that give me reason to hope and that it'll be different and that people will not engage in things that would drive significant portions of the population away because yeah. of, you know. Are you from Washington? I grew up in Minneapolis, right near where Lewis grew up. Oh. Yeah. So um, did you come here for Evergreen? I came here um, not for Evergreen. I came here pretty much just to live here. I have a cousin, Nate Larson, who's been on the show as well with Reed. Nate's my cousin. Oh, he's your cousin from Making Love, yeah? Making Love. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I see the resemblance now. That's kind of funny. You guys are... I see the physical resemblance. Yeah, our mothers are sisters. Yeah. So. You guys are kind of... You don't, they don't act, you guys don't have the same... You're not doing the same thing. That's a, That was uh, last week, I think. When, when uh, the, he, yeah, he was on, let's see, today is, oh no, that was last, uh, he was on last Tuesday, so you knew him, huh? Yeah, so Nate, you know, uh, encouraged me to move out here, and I was able to, he was help. you know, I, I stayed in the same house where he was staying until I found my own place, and then, you know, so it was like I had some support, and and then I did end up going to Evergreen, which is a phenomenal educational institution. Uh, great people and great programs and a really great approach to interdisciplinary and uh, qualitative education. It's a good experience. That's good. We should get both of you guys on at the same time, your cousins, huh? Totally, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've thought about joining... Um, a band with Nate. I'd really like to perform with him. Um, at one point, we had a dream about uniting the West Coast of the Americas. <clears throat> do you do you play music too? Revolution. No, I've I've tried to learn stuff. I took piano lessons when I was little. I like singing though and whistling. Oh yeah. All right. Let's call this McDonald's. It's in New York. But I guess. Oh. Yeah, but been, uh, right. I was busy. I think there's uh, has there been any uh, I don't know, I guess like radicals or like violence or anything happening out there, like any looting, any looting or people going too far with these protests? Has right. that happened yet? Not that I've heard at all. That's good. Yeah. So this this is some I've heard there's been some police brutality though, right? A little bit of that. Yeah, there's been a lot of pre police brutality in the in the New York protests, in the protests at Boston, there was a really uh, bad one. And then also in Seattle, there have been some really yeah. nasty um, but that's, behavior. That's almost the point, right? It's kind of like you're trying to, like, uh, like some civil, all the civil disobedience stuff. It's almost like trying to, like, nag the police into hurting you and then being like, they hurt me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, part of it is I mean, civil disobedience, nonviolence is a lot of it based around uh, the idea of personal sacrifice and um, <clears throat> being will willing to suffer for a greater good. But it's also, I mean, you're kind of, ta it's like, almost like entrapment. You're like taunting the police and you're like, hit, I dare, like, hit me, I'm, a do I'm doing stuff you don't like. And then, they, and then they eventually do and then they're like, they're against civil liberties because they hit me. 
Well, it would be certainly unfortunate if that happened. I'm I'm discouraged when I see people taunting the police. Yeah. And I, w I would discourage people from doing that. I think um, there's enough, you know, <clears throat> there's, there's actually recorded um, and do well-documented incidents of actual police officers impersonating protesters and engaging in provocative behavior Whoa. in order to disrupt the movement, disrupt efforts. Sometimes... Insider stuff. Yeah, sometimes yeah. uniformed police officers will uh, do things like picking on a vulnerable person in the protest um, in order to create um, anger amongst the protesters, which causes backlash. Yeah. So it's it's really tough, you know, and, and it's, it's very shameful behavior on the part of the police when those types of events occur. Yeah, the, the, all the police are definitely in, uh, not in the 1%, too. Anybody who's hired to watch those people, they're definitely not rich. So. That's very true. I, yeah. I've, he I've heard starting salary for police officers is like $20,000 or something, Twenty five. I mean, they don't make a whole lot of money, so... Yeah, all right. Let's call this McDonald's. They're, they're, they're in the other percent, too. Well, yeah. Oh. Has, has that been changed? I guess they've, they've been saying that it's been changing, but I think I feel like that the the one percent thing has been going on forever. I mean, isn't that just kind of like, is that that's not a new th that that is a new thing? I agree with you. I think it's been like this um, for a long time, and it seems like since I mean, in, even in like the his, since the history of I mean, even like the olden times or something. Yeah, ever since capitalism, perhaps, but but really um, the. Uh, the recent trend has been toward a, a more extreme disparity in wealth between those who are rich and those who are poor. So um, the, and that's, I think, why people are, are angry, middle class people. Unfortunately, this is what it has taken for something to happen and like a, a broad-based movement to start developing middle class people are being affected by the injustice that we're seeing. And so, um, and, and hopefully it's an opportunity to build solidarity between people who are quote unquote middle class and everyone else who is being affected. Um, which I, w I would say the 1% are affected as well. I think their humanity is demeaned and degraded along with everyone else's as a result of these systematic injustices and oppressions. Yeah. Well, we're getting down to it. We only have about six minutes left in the show. Yeah, I, w I brought in something I wanted to share. It's like, a, it's a pamphlet that I found in the um, bathroom at the oh. Thurston County Courthouse. This is one of those Christian comics. They, those yeah, are everywhere. It's, you can find them. They, they plant those. Christian Science Evangelism. I found this in the bathroom at the at building number two or building number right. three. You can show that. I'm going to keep trying to call these McDonald's. I'm going to get one in before the show ends. It's called Christian Science Evangelism. A guy named Dr. Kent Hovind from Florida. He's a doctor. And and it seems very racist to me. Like It looks... Um, yeah. <laughs> So the cover uh, has a picture of a gorilla holding a banana, a gorilla like as an ape, like a primate. Um, and there's a big, in big bold letters, it says, big daddy question mark. And so it's basically trying to uh, dispute evolution and say that um, we were, you know, I, I, I don't understand creationism. Hey, McDonald's? Hey. Hi, do you guys have the pumpkin pies yet? I'm sorry? Do you guys have pumpkin pies? Yes. Oh, you do? Hey, how much of that do you guys have left? Give me one second. Okay. Mira, yep. agárralo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Sierra. Hey. Hello. Oh uh, yeah, they, they already asked my question about pies, but hey, do uh, you know if there's still people protesting Hello? in the parks there? Can you still? Can, are there still people in the parks protesting there in New York? Excuse me. Say that again. I'm sorry. I can listen. Are people? Are people in the parks? Are they still protesting in New York? 
I don't know. There's a McDonald's restaurant. Yeah, but you can't to see outside though. No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Do you think it's You're safe? Welcome. Oh, is it safe? Yeah. Uh, they don't. They don't like to. Answer, they always get. They don't want to answer these political things. They get weird. Weirded out. So yeah, yeah. Th- those comics are everywhere. They put them out everywhere, and they're kind of weird, and they never. Yeah. They never make it never making any sense. I, just, I wonder who put it there and why and stuff. What you've seen them other places? Yeah, they put them on like bus stops and you haven't seen the yeah. Uh, let's see. We can hold the it same up. one. Not this exact same one, but this is a common format. They just have like weird stories of morals and stuff, and they're they're always kind of scary too, right? They yeah, yeah. No, there, there's a really angry evolution teacher in there, and and it really seems racist to me. Um, the <coughs> there's a uh, the evolution teacher. S- like might appear might be possible to interpret the evolution teacher as appearing to be Jewish and the um, the kid who is antagonizing him in class appears to be um, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant <laughs> so um, it's very it's an interesting thing and uh, I, you know encourage people to ask questions about racism you think uh, that, like hardcore or like a, what, is it, what is it called uh, some what do you call the Jewish people that are into the religion? Some, some what's it called? Um, they're orthodox. S- orthodox, something like that. I don't know. Are yeah, they into? Re- you think they they believe in evolution too, though? Groups yeah. Of Jewish people, different kinds of Judaism. So. Are they into are they into evolution too, though? Are the like the hardcore people? Or do you think they're as crazy as Christians? Though? I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't about know. That. I really don't know. I don't either. Uh, that's that's. That's a yeah. Those comics are everywhere. I don't know where they're, where they're being printed out, but they they end up in bathrooms and bus stops and. They're always kind of freaky. Very freaky. Yeah. Well, I'm getting down to it. We've got a minute left. Thanks, Bird. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Kenny. It's been great. Yeah. Should I'll I call you Kenny or Rick? Uh, it's, it's it's whatever. My name is Ken Rick, so you can say both. I go by Rick on the show, though. That's why I tell people. Um, so is it bad for me to call you Kenny on the show? It doesn't matter. Okay. I think most people actually end up doing that anyway. All right. But uh, so we're going to go... Maybe to the to these protests in the next couple of weeks or maybe one week. And if you ever get uh, time at that gazebo, uh, just give us a call. Yeah, I'll give you a call tomorrow. For or give us a call anyway to get yeah. get some updates on there. Yeah. And if you uh, if you want to go ahead and just bring a camera out there, we can show some footage on the show. Okay. Yeah. The, and we'd also like to go out there too. So, or maybe you can call call from there and ask people what's going on there. So. We have an insider into the Olympia protest. So if you guys out there on TV, if you guys have any questions about what's going on uh, downtown, if you drive by downtown, you see a bunch of people occupying the streets or the parks or whatever, and you're like, what's that? Um, call this number here, and we'll get you in t- contact with the with those people. And then, or you can just stop stop and talk to them too. I think, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you should feel totally comfortable going to the park and saying hello to folks and asking questions and. Um, you know, bring some food if you can. I'm sure people will be hungry. Bring your tent, bring some tarps, bring some money, and uh, go down there and have a good time. All right, thanks. End of the show. We did it again. We made it. Yeah, thanks, YouTube. Check us out on there. Call, check us out on Facebook, the Christmas Facebook Corporation, the Twitter Corporation. <laughs> Send us a letter through the mail. It's the 14th, Friday the 14th. You guys want to be on the crew? You don't have to do anything. You want to be on the crew, bird? You can put your n- just put your name on here, yeah. and that's it. But you're, you're already there, Robert. You see him? Yeah. Yes. He's on the crew. Thanks, viewers. Thanks, TCTV. Thanks, LeBebe. Check it out on the internet. Thanks, hell yeah, dog. Hell yeah. Bye-bye.